Hey, digital designers. Today, we're going to be learning how you can select a group of groups of pixels and make adjustments to them in Photoshop. We're going to be using four images that you guys have downloaded from Google Classroom. So you should have already downloaded this image, this image, this image, and this image. And you can see I've opened them all in Photoshop as different tabs along the top. We're going to start with the most basic selection tools, uh, which are the marquee tool. Your second tool on your toolbar here, if I mouse over it, its shortcut is the letter M and the lasso tools. Okay, shortcut is letter L. So we're going to use these to select different parts of this picture and make some changes to them. One of the first things I want to do is zoom in on this picture that is not like the others. So you can see I've got two blue images here and one gray one. And so I want to select all of the pixels within this frame and change their color. The easiest way to do that is going to be with the marquee tool. So I'm going to go ahead and click in here and select only the pixels that are inside that frame. And then to change their color, I want to add an adjustment layer. And you can see it gives me that option right here. It looks like a little circle with a half white, half black in there. If we click it, it will create an adjustment layer over here on the side where you can make adjustments to those pixels only. So if I want to add some color to this, I'm going to use the adjustment layer called Hue and Saturation. I come over here and I click this tab. And you can see I have three sliders, one for hue, which is another word for color, one for saturation, which controls how bright or how faded those colors are, and one for lightness that controls the brightness or darkness of the individual pixels. I want to change all this to blue, so I'm actually going to check this little box right here that says colorize, and then I'm going to move the hue slider until I see all of those pixels basically start to turn blue. Um, we're going to find it right about there. That looks pretty good, but it's a little bit faded. So let's turn up their saturation until it matches the blue of the other two pictures. And now I've made those adjustments. Now this is called a non-destructive adjustment because if I look down here, you can see that a new layer has been added for hue and saturation. And if I decide, oh, you know what, that was a mistake. I wanted to leave that gray. All I have to do is turn this layer off and it goes back to its original state, okay? Um, so that's one way that we can select these objects. Let's look at another way. I wanna take this wooden bowl here, and I want to select all the pixels inside that circle. And obviously the marquee tool uh, as a rectangle is not gonna to work too well for that. But if I hold down on it, I can grab the elliptical marquee tool, which creates circles, and the easiest way to select this is I'm going to put my target right in the middle of that bowl. I'm going to hold down Alt and Shift at the same time. And as I pull my mouse out, you can see it's making a perfect circle that I can expand until it covers that whole bowl. Okay, So I got a pretty good selection there. That looks good. And uh, again, I'm going to be adding an adjustment layer to just this part. So I'll click the little half circle. And the adjustment that I want to make for this, again, is hue and saturation. This time, though, instead of coloring the bowl, I'm going to turn down the lightness so that this entire bowl turns into a black silhouette. Okay? Uh, if I push it the other way, everything gets super white. If I push it this way, it's going to get black. And that's all I want to do for this individual part. Let's go on to the next one, which is our star here. Instead of using the marquee tool, I'm going to jump down and grab the lasso tool. And the lasso tool, we've already played around with with our Spider-Man poster yesterday. We're going to use the polygon lasso, though, because I need to select all the edges of this star. So to use this, I'm going to start at the top of the star. I'm going to click once. I'm going to bring it down. You see this little string here to the corner. And then I'll go out to the edges. And I'm just going to kind of play connect the dots. I'm clicking very carefully around the edges of the star until the whole thing is selected. And when I get back to the beginning, you can see that it gives me a little circle. It tells me the loop is complete. All right, now for this one, let's add an adjustment layer. And on here, I'm going to do another hue and saturation. But this time, I want you to really pump up that saturation slider 
so that this star pops. We're going to push it all the way to 100%, and we're going to change the color of the star to anything you like. Just make sure it doesn't look gold like we started out. Great, so you can see I've got three adjustments here. If I were to hide these layers, everything goes back to normal. If I turn them on, it saves the changes I made. Okay, finally, we've got this weird looking rock here on the table, and this is a very organic shape, meaning that it doesn't have any a lot of straight lines in it. Uh, it's not a circle, it's not a rectangle. So this would be a case where I wanna use the lasso tool. I'm gonna take my lasso and in fact, I'm going to actually choose the magnetic lasso here, and I'm going to very slowly go around the edge of this rock and watch that lasso select where it bumps up against the white pixels of the brick wall. Okay, I'm going to be careful bringing it around the bottom and then connect back to the beginning, and I've got a really good selection of that rock there. Let's add one more adjustment layer. We'll do hue and saturation one more time. And I think for this one, let's take all of the saturation out of the rock so that it becomes just pure black and white, okay? It's going to switch to shades of gray. Uh, there's no more color in this image at all. And if I zoom out, you can see I've made four adjustments to this picture, okay? So this one's complete. I'm ready to save it. I'm going to go up to File, Export, Quick Export as PNG. And I'm going to put it right back into my downloads folder, but I'm going to add my name to the beginning of this. So I'll put Roper right at the beginning. That way I know this is the photo that has the changes to it. You'll have one version that's the original photo, and you'll have one that has your name on it telling us that you made some changes to it. Hit save, and we're all done.